So many people get on Hammer. I mean, the man sold 10 million records. I'm not getting on Hammer. And I'm A huge number of individuals use Hammer. The guy sold 10 million albums. After all, I know what was said, but it was something like Hammer asking Mike why they weren't dead yet. That was like AOL back in the day. You couldn't really see videos on that. I wanted to know why we couldn't see my videos spending any money. Hammer could have told some people to foo him the up. Hey there, are you ready for the scoop of the century? I'm not getting on Hammer, and I'm not going to say he did sell 10 million records. But the crack find bought 10 million rocks. The whole town is abuzz with excitement when N.C. Hammer dropped a bombshell that was directed specifically at Diddy. It's like gossip on steroids, with Hammer not holding back as he gives Diddy a message that will chill you to the bone. This isn't your typical celebrity, however. Grab your snacks and get ready for an exciting ride through a scandal that's sparking conversations and sending pulses racing throughout the entertainment industry. Of course, before I spill any beans, make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification. Feud is a full-blown showdown that's about to rock the world of entertainment. Because MC Hammer didn't match the stereotype and is one of the most genuine people you'll ever meet, be sure to subscribe for more updates and videos like this one. In his early years, the game MC Hammer, who is known for his catchy beats and impressive moves, was praised as one of the most genuine characters in the music industry's gangster scene. But what is the untold story behind this unexpected persona? And how does it connect to his feud with Diddy? Let's go back to the days before the parachute pants and hit songs that went viral. As MC Hammer moved through the harsh streets, survival depended on one's level of toughness. According to legend, Hammer was no stranger to the world of gangs, having carved himself his niche among gritty crews. However, despite his quick ascent to fame, Whisper said that he stayed grounded and never forgot where he came from. Hammer's determination was strengthened by his brave revelation of the murkier sides of the music business, where he saw musicians being used and controlled, especially by powerful people like Diddy. There were suspicions that Diddy was taking advantage of the business and padding his own pockets. When confronted with Diddy's dubious behavior, former Streetwise rapper MC Hammer did not back down and boldly spoke up about his beliefs. He was determined to take on the injustice head-on and did not back down from a fight. When Hammer reached his breaking point and said he had had enough, we thought, oh, we go to church, boy, we'll go with MC Hammer. But Hammer was the most gangster of them all. His actions sent shockwaves through the industry, frightening even heavyweights like Suge Knight and Tupac. Hammer wasn't just a game when he entered the scene. Growing up in Oakland, he commanded respect. Being one of eight siblings in a neighborhood that was compared to the war-torn streets of Beirut, Hammer learned how to overcome adversity at a young age. As a result, when rumors began to spread about his feud with Diddy, few were taken aback. Hammer had a reputation for authenticity that was forged during his upbringing, and he was unflinching in his resolve. When the chips were down, Hammer was prepared to defend his peers and unwavering in his commitment to maintaining authenticity. So why did Hammer target Diddy? It's no secret that Diddy has gained a reputation for his cunning tactics. There were many rumors about the dishonest business practices and betrayals Hammer utilized to rise up the ranks of the company, but Hammer chose to ignore them. Some underscore underscore mentioned Hammer in one of his songs, saying that Hammer rolled up with him on him in Oakland with something like 30 or 40 deep, and he was like, I'm sorry, Mr. Hammer, this dude doesn't play. MC Hammer is well known for his singles that hit the charts and his captivating dancing movements. Harper's is a lesser known aspect of himself that not many people are aware of. Some even claim that he inspired more fear in the streets than Suge Knight did. But what motivated him? What is his background? 
Let's take a closer look at this nice house we keep reading about. Oh, it's doing well. You know, it's coming along slowly, but surely you know because I'm not there to really check it out. We thought this would be a typical church outing, picturing a wholesome experience with MC Hammer. However, what we discovered was that he embodied unexpected depth and resilience despite his persona. Stanley Kirk Perel, the father of MC Hammer, emerged from the rough neighborhoods of East Oakland. California raised amidst adversity within a sprawling family and a crim-laden environment, his early years were marked by hardship enduring his parents' separation at a tender age of five, he found himself under the sole care of his mother when queried about his ability to navigate away from trouble Hammer attributed his path to a profound love for his mother, a sentiment too strong to betray this environment forged my determination to strive for more to transcend the confines of anonymity Hammer reflected growing up in such adversity survival was a daily battle for a kid despite the harsh realities Hammer ingeniously sought avenues for financial stability, leveraging family ties to the Oakland as he hustled baseball tickets and deftly navigating the sports scene. Moreover, his passion for dance and entertainment flourished early on as he captivated audiences with impromptu shows in parking lots accompanied by his ever-present radio. Here's where the narrative takes a fascinating turn. One fateful day, Charles Finley, the owner of the team, recognized Hammer's exceptional talent. At just nine years old, Hammer was offered a role as a clubhouse assistant, a testament to his dedication and prowess, his hard work and determination didn't go unnoticed, propelling him to the remarkable position of vice president within the organization. While still in his teenage years at the time, our production company, Hull, and they had just signed a contract with MC Hammer, and so they were like, well, Ham wants to see you guys as well, and so on when we were told that Easy the moniker Hammer found its origins in a serendipitous encounter with Reggie Jackson, the renowned outfielder for the Oakland as Jackson, noting Hammer's resemblance to the legendary Hank Aaron called him the Little Hammer, a moniker that lasted with him throughout his path. After graduating from high school and originated in the exciting world of baseball, Hammer first enrolled in a short-term college program, but his academic path did not appeal to them. Instead, he entered the Navy, where he worked with his roommate to develop his musical skills and made music demos in the barracks. Hammer's service was concluded with an honorable discharge. After leaving the Navy, N.C. Hammer started a new chapter in his life by joining the ranks of a gospel hip-hop group called the Holly Ghost Boys. Prior to his quick ascent to fame, he rekindled his love for music and spirituality and co-founded a Christian rap ensemble called the Holly Ghost Boys with vocalist and instrumentalist John Gibson. The group performed at a variety of venues, including the prestigious Beverly Theater in Beverly Hills. Despite early promise, the group's journey was short-lived Dissolving after the release of a few tracks, Unfavor Hammer decided to take charge of his destiny fish's brains as, in a crucial turn of events. This generation has produced so many antidepressants that the lakes are now brimming with them, and the fish have developed brains. N.C. Hammer set the groundwork for successful records in 1986, when he went to Oakland's elite Dwayne Murphy and Mike Davis.